Good evening, welcome to the Sport and Sport Science live Q&A. I'm Alex, I'm the Marketing Manager here um, at Brooks and Melton College and I'm joined by Jack and David who are going to answer all your questions tonight. So I'm going to start by handing over to David and he is going to talk about uh, level two and level three sport. Yeah, hi guys. So my name's David. I'm one of the, the sports lecturers on the course. So apologies, you can't see me on screen. Um, camera's currently not working. Um, but I'm just going to talk you through sort of the, the sport programs that we have at the college. So we've got two levels of sport. Um, we've got the, the initial NCFE in sport, and that's the level two. So the level two is a one year course. Um, and to gain access onto that course, you need four GCSEs, and that's at a grade D or a grade three and above, um, or alternatively, a level one in sport um, and an entry three in functional skills. Um, so how this um, course would work, there's, there's various different modules. So within this course, you would do modules such as participating in sport, um, anatomy and physiology, you also have your health, exercise and nutrition, uh, sports coaching's on there, as well as organising a sports event, sports psychology and also sport and skills and tactics. Um, so there's quite a range of different sort of assessment criteria that you'll you'll get with that. There's, there's no exams within this um, within this course, so a lot of it will be coursework based. Um, so you might have workbooks, presentations, practical sessions, um and, and different sort of components with that um the martin criteria that you will get so it's set between three different grades so we have pass criteria merit criteria and also the distinction criteria so obviously with, with the the distinction being kind of the highest criteria that you would get um so this allows you to access sort of our level three course if you want to then move into our level three program um, so the level three program that we have at the college, um, the sort of two different pathways you can go down. So you can go down through the BMC route or you, if you are part of the Leicester Tigers setup, we have a level three in sporting performance and excellence. Um, so that's kind of more orientated towards the elite performer. Um, however, both courses are a two year course on the level three program. So if we just talk about the initial sort of level three, if you were um, linked to, to the college itself, the BMC, as opposed to the Leicester Tigers. So the BMC pathway will take you down a two year course um, and the entry requirements for this one are five GCSEs. So that is five GCSEs, which are a grade C um, or four and above, um, or you would need the, the level two course um, that we've just spoken about there and a level two in functional skills as well. Um, so within the, the GCSEs, we do sort of say that the, the maths and English are there as well for that. So with this one being a two year program, um, there are again, lots of different components that are made up through this course. Um, the first year you will take seven different modules. Um, so those seven different modules um, kind of follow one from the level two. Um, so you've got the anatomy and physiology again, the fitness training and programming for sport, um, you have the professional development in the sports injury, um, sports leadership. So get to know sort of real good leadership styles to be able to orientate coaching sessions effectively. Um, you've got your sports psychology, your practical sports performance and also coaching for performance. And then going into the second year, you're going to be looking at application of fitness testing, research methods in sport. Um, you have your work experience component there as well, so you can get some industry experience. Um, development and provision of sport, investigating business, uh, skill acquisition and also performance analysis for sport. Um, so similar sort of thing again as level two, you'll have lots of different ways that you can assess through this. So with this one, however, you do have some exams um, within this two year course. So you will have uh, two modules in the first year will be an exam and also two modules within the second year. Um, but the rest again will be made up through whether that's essays, reports, presentations, practical sessions, um, Q and A's as well. Um, so that involves sort of the BMC pathway if you're linked with the college. We also have a pathway which is linked with Leicester Tigers. So our Leicester Tigers course is known as the level three in sporting excellence and performance. Um, this once again is a two year course. 
So again, the entry requirements are pretty much the same in that you need five GCSEs, for, uh, which is level four or C and above, or that level two in sport um, in accordance with functional skills in there as well. Um, it differs slightly to the course we've just spoke about for the level three. So there are five units within the first year and there are also five units within the second year. Um, so the units in the first year, you're looking at careers in sport, health and well-being, professional sports performer, nutrition, and also how technology can influence sporting performance. And then moving into that second year, we've got applied anatomy physiology. So we're just going that one step further. Um, we have a research project where you almost do like a mini dissertation to set you up for moving into HE. Um, we've got psychology for the professional sports performer, coaching, uh, coaching skills and also school sport delivery. Um, so again, that encompasses this, the, the same sort of assessment methods. However, if you are involved with this course, there are no exams. Um, so what that will be taken up from is a lot of different types of coursework, your essays. Um, there's a lot of podcasts in here as well. So you'll have podcasts, you might have interactive maps that you have to do as part of this. Um, so this one's a little bit more hands on um, where you're going to be doing a lot more kind of the practical component. <clears throat> that would link back to your rugby as well. Um, so for the, for sort of the two level three courses, it's equivalent to three year levels um, uh, to, to allow you transition. So again, you can get your distinction, your merit and also your pass criteria. So the distinctions equivalent to kind of A, distinction star would be your A plus um, from there. And then obviously that will allow you to, to transition into HE, whether that's with us at Brooksby, um, or whether you're looking to go to, to a different uh, university outside the college for this. Um, so that's essentially the rundown um, of the sport programme that we have, the level two and the level three. Um, we also have level three in sports science, which Jack is just going to take us through now. Okay, just pass over to Jack. Um... Right. There you go. <laughs> right, yeah. Sorry, interrupt. So, hi right, guys. Yeah, my name's Jack. Uh, teach across the level three, and and then there's GRE program on the sports science side of things. So, we'll go through the sports science course in itself. Dave gave a really good sort of outline of of how all the courses work here, and and the sports science level three works similar to uh, the sports level three course you've got some modules uh, about seven or eight I think in the first year and then seven or eight in the second year as well this this course does include exams um, it'll be two in your first year and two in your second okay and they're placed um, they're placed in sort of this the December of each term we, we try and front load them so what that means is that that when you come in, it, it can seem a bit hectic, but we try and uh, get those exams out of the way for you so you haven't got to worry about them anymore. And then that obviously gives you the best chance to to resit them should you should you not quite do as well as you want to. Um, similar to the level three sport, the the entry requirements for this five GCSEs at grade C or four or above. I'm still working on on letters, not numbers, um, mm -hmm. and they include English and maths. Um, science is desirable, but not essential. Um, and when I talk through the modules in a, in a second, you, you might understand why that might be of use. Or um, you can progress onto the course if you have a level two in sport and a level two in functional skills. OK, so just just be aware that there is other routes onto it other than your classic GCSEs at the moment, which I think is is important. <coughs> OK, so Dave again alluded to the different pathways you can follow. OK, so similar with this one, you have the rugby and, and the football and the netball and, and the leadership ones. OK, so loads of options for you to get sort of extracurricular stuff in as well as the, as well as the qualification itself. If we take the first year, um, your exams will be in functional anatomy and applied and exercise, sport and exercise psychology. There your exam ones and then the rest of it is all is all coursework based and assessed via presentations, written work, um, discussions. So we try and and get a wide variety of, of assessment methods in to suit everyone. Uh, and then what we also do on this course is 
something called coaching for performance and fitness and this this is almost a wholly um, practical unit where we look to improve your coaching skills you guys get to do a bit of coaching um, we learn about the theory of coaching right at the start you guys plan a series of coaching sessions and actually deliver them so you go from one session all the way to, to three or four and you, you see progressions and you see yourself improve and you get to reflect on it um, we've also got biomechanics in sport and exercise science where we can use a lot of cameras and we can do a lot of analysis of your techniques of say playing football or moving about in the gym and then we would move on to the second year where it gets um, even sort of more applicable to potential careers in sports science or, or sport in general whether that's you guys want to go on and be a PT or you want to go on and do higher education um, which I'll touch on as well I think um, at the end of this about our higher education sort of program at the at the college we look to do units such as sports massage um, where you guys can actually gain an extra qualification in that alongside your course so it sets you up for, for working as a sports mature almost straight away coming out of college which is really good we look at nutrition for performance sports injury and assessment and then what dave mentioned as well with this new sports course with this sports science course you get to run your own research project so the second years at the moment um before some really good ideas but what they've come up with now between them is we're looking at the effect of coronavirus on mental health we're looking at the effect of, of the gyms closing on mental health so that's your opportunity to sort of make a unit your own we we don't give you too much scope with that um, or direction it's you guys get to investigate what's actually sort of driving you and, and inspired you to take part in sport or do this course like I said the the, the qualification allows you to, to either go work in the industry as a PT or as a manager or get onto a graduate program um, and it also allows you to go onto higher education um, and we run the sports science degree at our college is linked heavily or it's uh, approved by the University of East Anglia so really good uni in terms of on in terms of sort of cr uh, credibility within the industry um, lots of people go off to uni but then again lots of people go off and do um, practical things straight away and, and begun, begin working uh, in the industry we've got a number of sort of uh people that go off uh, students that have gone off to be sports coaches instructors officials um go on to do sports science work at, at universities and stuff like that so th the course itself is is so varied that you guys will get the, the sort of best opportunity you can uh to go on to do the career that you want at the end of it thank you and um, i think one thing we've just forgotten to mention or talk about is leicester city women the pathway with them. Um, does anyone want to talk about that? Either of you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Go on, Dave. You go. Well, ahead. Yeah. You, you, you voice first. Okay. So um, we also have the Leicester City Women's. Uh, I mean, yeah, I suppose we we were very heavy on the sort of lad side of sport yeah. there. So I apologise. Um, yeah, we we actually have two specific um, girls pathways. We have the netball academy sort of pathway where. We have the netball team that plays on a Wednesday as well, so don't feel as though we're <laughs> we're forgetting that. Um, and we've got the Leicester City Women's Women's Pathway as well, where you guys will be, um, you'll come in and you're and you'll trial for Leicester City Women, and then you're associated with them throughout throughout the two years there as well. So that's an excellent sort of um, extracurricular thing you guys can do. Um, if you feel out. obviously we did forget to mention that so i apologize but okay. um there is avenues for for the girls as well to to become sort of involved in elite sport and we i, th I don't think we mentioned but we regularly use these guys um and we get the coaches in to do chats and 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 different things we've had um anthony joshua's performance analyst come in and do a chat to the to the cohort um the rugby guys have currently got something planned in where they've got england's uh, nutritionists coming in to have a chat so th the opportunity is there for you guys not to just learn from us um, but learn from industry sort of experts as well. Thank you um, we've had a question so um, I will hand over to David for this one you've been talking for a while. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, how long do you spend in the classroom on the level three course? Um, so, I mean, if, if I just kind of talk through sort of the, the timetable that we have at level at level three. So currently the timetable um, is run sort of over three days per week. Um, it's kind of restricted just because of uh, the pandemic that we're in. So it, it may may be different depending on on whereabouts we are within this pandemic next year. Um, but we're looking at sort of a Wednesday. You would run a session from around about 9.30 till 12. So that'll be a two and a half hour sort of period, but you do have intermittent breaks in between. Um, then you would have your lunch followed by an hour of tutorial and then that's followed by what we call independent study. So just allow you guys to basically catch up on any assignments that you may, may need to, to do. Um, so we book out computer rooms to allow you to do that rather than you having to do work at home for that. Um, and then we've also got a session on the on the Thursday. So again, that is accompanied by independent study for, for the first morning session, where again, we would book those computer rooms for you guys to be able to sit down, do some work. Um, we then got a professional development, which would run from one o'clock to two o'clock. And then that is followed by practical sports performance, which is run from three o'clock till 4.30. Um, and then we have the Friday. So again, you would have that independent study to start with. <clears throat> that would be followed by some sports leadership component for an hour and then that finalizes with sports coaching um, so the sports coaching will last for the the final part of the friday and hopefully try to mix in with the theory as well as the practical um, <clears throat> but in amongst all that as well there are in enrichment opportunities so we do provide a full enrichment program whether that's going down the football route um, or as jack mentioned previously within the brooksby bears academy um, we also run just the kind of general sports sessions where you have the opportunity to play kind of whatever sport you want because we do have um, a sports hall um, within within the college as well. So you're able to take the opportunity to play sports that you wouldn't necessarily have had a chance to before, whether that's hockey, basketball, badminton, table tennis, etc. Um, so we try to include that within within the timetables as well. Great. And is it the same for sports science as well? Very similar. Yeah, yeah, the timetables kind of just switched around slightly. So it's because we have the same amount of modules sort of within sport and sports science, um, sport might come in sort of Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, where sports science would be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Great, thank you. Um, actually, so this links in quite nicely, but do students get access to the gym? Yeah, yeah, so we, we have a fully functioning S&C gym as well. So. Um, I think it's four power racks, uh, rock bikes, um, raw machines, Olympic bars, disc plates, dumbbells, kettlebells. So students have access to that and that's part of the enrichment programme as well. Um, so if anybody is looking to go down Leicester Tigers route, um, there's a, a strength and conditioning coach that you will do your sessions with. Um, but those who are possibly Leicester City, um, Brooksby Bears, for example, or just going down the BMC route, um, we do have sort of enrichment programs in myself, Jack and, and another lecturer called Curtis Holmes come from a strength and conditioning background. Um, so you will get to work with us within that S&C gym as well. Great, thank you. And if someone isn't particularly focused on one sport like rugby, is the leadership pathway the best option for them? Would they get a bit more of a broader view? Yeah, I mean, within all the sports programmes, really, even if they're in rugby, we do try and broaden the horizon so they get an opportunity to play a lot of sports. Um, so there's definitely access to everything with that, even those who are part of the Brooksby, uh, sorry, the Leicester Tigers, they still have that opportunity to, to come into the, the, the sort of um, sports pathway, the enrichment pathway, so they can take that opportunity to play as many sports as, as they want to really. Great, thank you. Um, we've had a question about funding, so um, I don't know who wants to answer this one, but how does funding work if I'm 24? Who wants to take that? <laughs> Shout at me. Here we go. I think um, as long as it's your first level three, I believe that you could get funding from the government. I think you could get an educational loan. Um, Andy, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think yeah. if you already have a level three, you would then have to fund that yourself, I think is, yeah. is, is the answer that I'm giving. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. And um, there is, if you are funding it yourself, there are adult learner loans available yeah. as well. And it works very similar, similarly to um, a HE student loan. Um, so 
that, that's very accessible to, to most people um, and we can I'll put a link to that in the chat actually um, so they've got a little bit more information on that I think um, David's typing an answer too great so yeah um, just, just popping the link in myself there now for oh, thank you <laughs> um, so we talked about enrichment and um, what sort is that sort of at lunchtime or how does that fit in what's available for students to do so typically what will happen with enrichment is if you want to say join the college football team that is on a Wednesday afternoon um, how we have run it recently um, sort of before lockdown was was you have an hour slot in your timetable given to you um, and you have the opportunity to either go up in the gym or you go up in the in the sports hall and you're supervised by one of the lecturers just so you guys can some sort of let off some steam a little bit so it might be you have um, enrichment for an hour on a Tuesday um, and then also once all this clears up and we get a bit of freedom you guys would get it on, on the Wednesday as well so you get an hour timetable each week depending on <laughs> what we go back to after lockdown that'll depend on when we actually have that put in. Great um, and if someone's listening now and thinking oh I'm not actually that fit at the moment um, but I really want to do sport does it matter? Not at all, not at all. Um, so there is a little bit of practical, so we will ask everyone to get involved, but we obviously will encourage everyone to to do as much as they can and push themselves in their own capacity. So there's no, do not worry about that at all. Yeah, we don't we don't assess on sort of fitness no. levels and things like that as well. So um, yeah, it's, it, that's no problem at all. Brilliant, thank you. Um, just got time for, for one more at the moment. So um, it's actually about how, how to apply. So that's, so that's very useful. Good timing. Um, if you do want to apply um, and you think you want to go down one of the pathways that Jack and David have mentioned, um, the best thing to do uh, for any of the sports courses is to go onto our website. Um, if you're doing it tonight, there's lots of links all over the virtual open day pages. Um, otherwise, you can go onto the home page of our website and there's a big apply now button. And in your personal statement, just mention if there's a pathway that you want to go down um, and also it will ask you what course you want to apply for. So just specify it's the if it's the level two or the level three sport or sports science. Um, and I will pop a link um, to that um, in the chat box as well. Um, someone has just asked or just quickly, we'll cover this one. Um, is there any one to one advice that can be given regarding the best course for me? Um, I would say for that the best thing to do is I'll pop an email address in the chat box for course inquiries um, which my team are managing tonight so um, we can send it over to uh, David or Jack or, or Andy depending on or Curtis depending on who the best person is for that for that one and we can get some advice for you and um, depending on what your questions are. Yep, yep. Um, did anyone yeah, have anything yeah. else to add? <laughs> we actually yeah. When, when they inquire, I think we, when we give them their interview, so they have a short interview with us over the telephone at the moment, that almost acts as, as one to one advice and we go through things in a little bit more detail um, with that prospective student and, and sort of find out really what they what they want to do and, and what they want to do going forwards and, and so on. I know it's very early, but whether they want to go on a HE and career sort of things and we'll, we'll give them one to one advice at that stage as well. No, it's a really good thing to consider if they do want to go to university because that might decide whether they do sport or sport science. Mm -hmm. um, yep. So yeah, brilliant. Thank you very much, guys. Um, and thank you everyone who's listened tonight. Um, we've had lots of really great questions. So yeah, if you need any more information, please let us know. But otherwise, we hopefully will see you in September. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Just guys. Bye.